Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Module 3, Biological Diversity. This is a bit of an intro, so I've actually called it Video Zero, um, just to give you a bit of an intro to biodiversity. So in this series of videos, we're going to be looking at the relationship between uh, natural selection and the selection pressures that uh, an environment and a series of other organisms may place on a population of organisms and um, to see how that may uh, result in changes in the population over time. What we want to do first of all, though, is we want to understand a little bit about uh, ecosystems, just so we understand when we talk about selection pressures exactly what it is that we're referring to. So the learning, tension, learning intention for this video is to just raise awareness of the importance of the study of different levels of biological organisation and how they apply to the ecological principles of distribution and abundance. So as we start this brand new module, the first inquiry question that we need to ask is how do environmental pressures promote a change in species diversity and abundance? So the keys that we're looking for in this first section are species diversity and also abundance. So there's a couple of important ecological terms here and that's why we really need to just set the scene uh, before we launch in. So up to this point, the first two modules that we've looked at have been cells as the basis of life and also organization of living things. We have delved a little bit into some of the biomolecules that are very important in chemical systems. And that includes in processes such as photosynthesis and also respiration. We've looked at some of the different types of organelles, particularly things like chloroplasts. and also mitochondria, but also things like the uh, plasma membrane. So we've seen how that organization of important biomolecules hang together to help produce some of these important structures. Then we looked at different types of cells and we started the process of looking at cell differentiation. We looked at the fact that specialized cells can group together to form tissues, which can also group together to form organs for a specific purpose and organs can form organ systems. And particularly when we're looking at multicellular organisms, that's when we're looking at differentiation. That's where we're looking at cells that have been set aside for a specific purpose. And we look at those two very important biological relationships of structure and function. In organisms, we, in the last topic, looked at three different groups again, and they were about unicellular, colonial, and multicellular. But now we're going to move beyond the cellular level, beyond the organism level, and we're going to reach into the larger uh, numbers of organisms that make up populations, which would be one species, uh, communities, which are uh, many species, and then ecosystems, which are a human construct. They're not a, um, an actual biological thing. Um, they are something that we use. They're open systems, which means that matter and energy can move in and out of these systems. There's no boundary other than the ones that we arbitrarily set. So organisms can move uh, between different ecosystems. Nevertheless, we can identify different ecosystems that we can study that makes it easier for us to understand some of the relationships between each of these uh, levels of biological organization. One of the important things uh, to be aware of is the higher we go up in these hierarchies, the less we know, the more complex the systems are and therefore our understanding of what's happening in the biosphere is not as good as we'd like it to be. And hence, when issues come up such as the effect of um, the greenhouse effect, the effect on climate change, increasing bushfires. There's a whole lot of different things that uh, can and are happening. We're not always sure exactly what impact they're going to have on the biosphere as a whole um, or on individual ecosystems and exactly how the organisms within those ecosystems are going to respond. 
The one thing that I want to do through this particular module is to give you some ecological principles. And obviously, they're going to be more important in our final module, which is on ecosystem dynamics. Uh, but even here, when we're starting to look at selection pressures and we're looking at concepts such as distribution and abundance, it's important that we have a foundation of ecology in order to set ourselves uh, the problems of what are selection pressures, how do they affect organisms, how do they drive evolution, how do they affect populations and communities. So here's ecological principle number one. And ecological principle number one is in any environment, the abundance of particular species will be affected by changes in the many factors, uh, many of the factors in its environment. A small number of these factors are regarded as limiting factors, sometimes just one may be the limiting factor. So we're going to look at the concepts of distribution and abundance. So basically the difference between those two is distribution is where is something and abundance is how many are there. And these factors of distribution and abundance uh, are affected by a number of different um, types of factors and one of those important ones or one of those important groups we would look at as limiting factors. But let's look at that in just a little bit more detail. So in terms of distribution, so this is the other important uh, concept that we wanted to talk about. Distribution, uh, which is broadly where, and then abundance, which is how many. So there are two key questions in ecology. So um, are organisms present in certain places? And if not, why? And if they are, is there anything that's limiting their abundance? It's, that's limiting their, their population numbers in any way? Or are their numbers growing out of control? So they're the questions that we're, we're looking at here. And if we don't find certain organisms in certain places, there's four main reasons why that would be the case. The first one is they can't reach. And that's an issue of dispersal. If organisms can't get over a mountain, if they can't cross a river, if they can't cross an ocean, if they can't fly, there may be certain types of environments which would be ideally suited, but they can't reach. If they can reach and they choose not to go into those environments, well, that may be an issue of habitat selection. And there's going to be some examples that we'll look at in class of organisms that are, for whatever reason, choose not to occupy certain types of niches. If they, will, if they can reach and they will go, but something in the environment is um, affecting them in a, in a tolerant sense, that is either a physical or a chemical factor in the environment. So here we're talking about things like temperature, temperature range, absolute temperatures, very, very cold, very hot, uh, day length, or at least the, the, um, the amount of light there is through the days, seasonal um, changes, uh, availability of water or other nutrients, availability of gases like oxygen or carbon dioxide. All of these come under the limiting factors and, and feed into ecological principle number one. Now, if they can reach and they will go and they can tolerate the conditions, sometimes the exclusion is a biological one. That is an interaction between two different individuals or two different species. Often competition can occur within uh, a population, but it can also occur between populations in a community. We also find some very positive examples of interactions between different groups of organisms, and we're going to look at a couple of them as we go on. In the next two videos, we're going to be looking at primarily limiting factors, the abiotic factors that can affect whether or not in, uh, particular organisms will live in an environment. And also in the following one, we'll look at some of the biotic interactions, some of the interactions between living things that may or may not support their living together. Thanks for watching.